Okay, this is quite a short video and one which I'm sure some of you have seen before. But this is for a friend of mine, Perry, uh, a fellow YouTuber, just starting out. He's from just outside Denver in Colorado and he recently popped in to see me. He was over in the UK, so he came into the shop, had a little poke around um, and gave me a very nice sweatshirt. This is his channel logo. I'll put the link to his channel on my description. It's uh, SW Dweeb. Um, go and check him out, give him a look, give him some support. He's got all sorts of things on his channel. Um, he's, I think he's heading towards doing a bit of foundry work. He's built himself a foundry, but there's all sorts of other stuff on this. It's a really interesting channel. So pop over there and give him a look. But as I say, this is for him because a while ago he put up a video where he was trying to make a rivet header um, but with multiple size holes in. Um, well, they can work, but it's e so much easier just to do one for the size you want. Um, so this is just a quick video just to show you basically how to do it, and you can also use it as a monkey tool for squaring up tenons. So anyway, let's get on with the video, take a look, and I'll put all the info in the description. Okay, so rivets. Um, come in all shapes and sizes. Um, half inch one here. Don't know where that came from. Had it for kicking about for ages. These I bought for the, the uh, garden bench that I made in one of my previous videos. You can buy them by the sack load. So if you're doing a big job where you're going to need loads, it's just much easier just to get on the phone, get a bag load. But I've got a bag load of 38 ones. Um, so occasionally you might want a different size, whether it be for making tongs or a one-off job that needs riveting. Um, so that's why we're going to make this this little header. Um, it's just a, a real handy tool to have kicking about and very easy to make. So get rid of them. I'm going to do one for this 8mm or 5 sixteenths. Um, I haven't got any rivets that size and they're quite a handy little size for various little jobs, small tongs and things. I'm going to use this bit of 2 inch round basically because I've had it kicking about. I've, obviously you can see I've cleaned it up because it was covered in rust. Um, yep, yeah, 2 inch. It doesn't have to be 2 inch. What's that? 4.5 inches long. That's quite a good size because you can get hold of it well. But it doesn't have to be two inch, it could be inch and a half, could even be an inch if you're using a small rivet. Anyway, we're going to put a hole in the middle, um, drill it down to about 30 mil, which I reckon is long enough for most jobs. Um, you could go a bit longer. I'm going to round the top off, and that has two benefits. One is if you when you're hammering, if you don't hammer completely square, your hammer doesn't hit the edge of the tool, so it's not going to damage it in any way. Anyway, let's first of all mark up the centre, see if we can get uh, a hole drilled. Now I haven't got a centre finder, so I'm just going to use my odd legs, set at an inch, because this is a two inch bar obviously, and then just scribe on a million sides. Just keep moving it around, scribe it and scribe it and scribe it, and eventually you'll find that the lines are all cross, and where they cross is the centre. So that's uh, that's another job I could do one day, isn't it? Make myself a little centre finder. Not that I use round very often, but it's quite handy to be able to find the centre. Right, I don't know if you can see that. I'll catch the light right. All the lines cross, and where they cross is the middle. So I'm just going to put a centre pop in there. There you go. I'm going to go over, stick a hole in it. I always like to start with a, center, uh, a pilot drill. Um, just makes drilling much easier. Now I've set it to the top of the job. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark 30mm on the guide at the top, which I now realise you can't actually see. Um, 
but I'm going to mark it so I know when to stop, basically. So we get this high speed. I did see someone on the internet a while ago say um, you don't need lubricant on your drills if your drill's sharp and the feed speed's right. Well, yeah, that may be so, but I'll tell you what, try a bit of lubricant. It makes the job so much easier and makes your drills last much, much longer between sharpenings. So I don't know where that uh, theory came from. Well, I suppose it's not a theory, but uh, try it. Lubricant really, really works. Okay, so... Bit more jollop. You can feel that that stuff works because when you're cutting without it, it's sort of grabbing and notching and all sorts. And when you use a bit bit of lubricant, it's smooth as it really is. It does help. Um, I swear by it. It, make, it and it just makes your tools last longer. Hacksaws, all sorts. Right, so that's the pilot in. I got to me 30 mil. Let's see what size drill we're going to need. Let's have a quick measure up. Now this is... It's not a ground bar, so it's going to be a little bit iffy, but it's pretty much 8 mil. So, I'm going to find... Well, I found a drill that is just... And that's gonads bigger just want it a real fraction bigger. I can't see what size the drill is because it hasn't got any markings on it. Um, it's an old... I think it's an old Imperial of something or other. It's one of those shiny ones. It's probably even might even be cast iron but it's, it's the right size anyway. Because the, the thing I'm worried about is that uh, once this material's hot it's going to expand a bit. I don't want to get, it to get stuck. Right, I'm going to show you what I did earlier that you couldn't see. This guide at the top here, it's got a, th a thread on it. So if you were doing lots of repetitive work, you can actually wind a nut down from above um, to where you want it. And that will give you the same depth every time. But I'm just putting a chalk mark on it, just for now, because I'm doing just doing the one. So, same procedure. Winder in. Bit more lube. Really worth its weight in horseshit. This this uh, drill. Absolute brilliant tool. Right, there we go. Got that done. Right, so I'm going to take this edge off next. And the second uh, reason that I gave, or I didn't give you the second reason, and that is when you've done your rivet or if you're using it for tenoning, if you've got a slight dome in it, when the two bits of metal come together and you hammer the rivet over, all four sides or all the sides are going to touch. Whereas if it's flat or slightly the other way, it won't. And however much you hammer it, the job won't tighten up. It's still going to wobble. So if you've got a little bit of concavity in the job, that just tightens everything up. So I'm just going to run it round on this wheel. I'm just holding it flat on the tool rest. Actually, I'm just going to... You can see what's happening there. It's just gradually putting a very tiny shape in it. I'm just going to drop the tool rest a little bit so we get a little bit more angle. Just a touch. It doesn't need to be a lot. I'm just going to keep running that around there as evenly as I can to try and get it to come to the centre. This is another good tool. You can see it's coming. 
not quite coming to the centre yet, so I have to make a little bit of adjustment. The only trouble is I think the bearings are on their way out on this one, so I'll have to take it apart at some stage and whack some new ones in. But it's done a lot of work, hell of a lot of work, and it was second hand when I got it. So, can't complain. There we go, it's coming up. I don't quite know why that's going out of focus. No real reason why it should. It's coming back into focus for some reason. Cameras, eh? I think it could be because it's quite dark in this corner. It's not a particularly sunny day yet, today. Well, the forecast is for it to get sunny later on. There you go, almost there. Again, not quite coming to the centre, but I'm just going to try and centre it up a bit, doing it this way. Everything's by eye and by hand. You can usually get there somewhere. Look at that, that's not bad. I'm going to leave it at that, call it a day at that. That's just left about just under an eighth of an inch flat on the top there. Right, let's have a little look. So, a bit of bar, you can see that goes in there nicely. It's not tight, but it's not what you call sloppy. That's a reasonable clearance fit. So, let's get the fire alight, and we'll see if we can give it a go. So, I've cut some slugs. I've cut them 30mm uh, plus uh, one and a half times the diameter, so they're 42mm basically. And that should give me a decent head. So, let's get a couple hot. Give it a go. Now what I'm going to do, just put a couple of drops, literally just a couple of drops, no more. I'm just going to try and drip that drip in there. One, can get another one on the end. That's two. That's all it needs. Otherwise, uh, what tends to happen if there's too much oil in there, it as you put the hot metal in and hit it, it sprays out. And if you get hit in the face with some hot oil, it's a little bit unpleasant. So literally a drop. Okay. Give it a go. Drop it in. Give it a hammer. And that's it. Done. A pair of pliers, and that should. Yep, just pull out. That oil has just eased it. That's all you need. Nice little rivet. Perfect for, let's say, all sorts of little jobs. So, let's get another one hot, do another one. Yeah, little one-off jobs. Spot on. Okay, let's try another one. Right, and you can see now what I mean about the hammer blows. My hammer blows aren't going on their square, but they're not hitting the edge of the tool. There you go, another one. Pucker. And so you could make the hole deeper so you can cut your rivet off to the length you want, but I think 30 mil is probably going to be plenty long enough for most jobs. Do one more. Easy peasy. Just like that. So, there you go and it's such an easy tool to make you can make one for each size rivet you need and because you're probably not going to be making many out of them it should last yeah, well, it last you for years absolutely years keep it somewhere where it doesn't go too rusty and you can knock out as many rivets as you like the other advantage of it being fairly big is if you, do, you are doing more than one or two it won't get too hot too quickly because it will heat up quite quickly so there you go. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.